Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of T-Dog RC. Uh, this is part two of the um, assembly of the Seagulls models extra. And in this episode, we are gonna be looking at getting all the surfaces hooked up. So the elevator and rudder at the back and getting the wings all set up with the ailerons and getting the servos installed all that sort of stuff, plus maybe a few other little bits um, along the way. Just a quick one before we get stuck in, if you're into fixed wing RC, then please uh, consider subscribing to my channel, because that's what we do on here. Uh, and if you like the videos, then give me a thumbs up, that really helps me out, and uh, yeah, I'd really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, and most of the viewers that watch my channel aren't subscribers, so why not treat yourself and hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And yeah, bef uh, let's get it onto the bench and um, let's get stuck in. Okay, as I said in the intro, um, we're going to get stuck into all the surfaces now on this video. So I'm um, going to start with the ailerons, getting the servos mounted uh, and getting them hooked up here to the horn, etc. So first job I've got to do is take this plate off, which is just masking taped on at the factory. And then in here, it's pretty sticky masking tape. Be careful you don't rip the film. Okay, so. We've got to get the servo mounted on here um, and I've got to drill the holes um, for the servo screws and then also we've got to drill some holes in the corners of this uh, to hold it down. I'm not sure whether they actually supply, oh yeah it looks like they do those little screws there probably for that. So uh, let's get a servo out and just see how it fits initially. I've been finding that these are way too small. Um, but let's see. Oh no, that's absolutely spot on in this instance. So I don't need to cut anything out. So I just got to get the grommets installed on the servo and then drill out these holes, um, get that mounted. Um, so we can get that done. The only thing I found with these uh, McGregor servos, and it's got these horrible grommets. So it's got these ones, which are like an all-in-one, and I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but they just do not seem to fit over here at all. Um, and it really uh, winds me up. I had this, the exact same thing with some JX servos that I bought. Um, it, it literally just it doesn't fit on. Um, so yeah. Let me know in the comments if I'm doing something wrong here, but I usually end up cutting like a slot in it with my knife to get these on and obviously get the uh, the little metal hats installed underneath. So I'll get that done, um, get this drilled out, and then we'll see how that's looking in relation to this horn. The other thing I've got to do as well is tighten this control horn up because out the box um, it's pretty loose. Um, I'm guessing they've just quickly put it in place there. Um, so we'll get that um, tightened up and what I'll do with these, I don't tend to use Loctite because it can sometimes damage the plastic so I just put some shoe goop on these uh, once I'm happy it's in the right position but I won't do that just yet but I will get it tightened up. Uh, but yeah, let me crack on with this uh, servo and uh, I'll come back. Okay, we are all hooked up with this Aeron. Um Nice bit of movement. Uh, also there's very little play, um, so that's um, that's always nice to see. I've just uh, slid that up there, so yeah, that's a nice tight setup, um, and we've got decent amount of movement there. 
should be more than enough. Bear in mind as well, this is on 4.8 volts. I'm going to be running this on 6 volts. Um, and this is a fairly flat battery. Not that that's going to make any difference to the movement, but um, or the travel, should I say, but certainly will make the uh, servo's life a little bit easier. But yeah, plenty of movement there, and it feels uh, nice and smooth. I have to say that these McGregor servos, although, you know, I was sort of saying they look very similar to the JX ones, they are, they do seem very smooth. They're, they're very quiet and they just sort of sound very smooth. So maybe the internals are, are slightly different. Um, so in order to get this hooked up, servo mounted to the plate um, and then put the servo arm on, centralize that first before I put it on, or centralize the servo, uh, and then these screws um, screw in to the actual wing and that, that mounts the servo on. The only thing I've got to do when I'm ready, in fact I can, I can probably do that now, um, um, I was waiting for a for servo extension lead but as you can see here I've found one. Um, I've just got to back those off and just put a bit of CA down the holes um, just to make them a little bit stronger because obviously you don't want this falling off because this is holding your Aeron servo in. Uh, and then the setup is, uh, so it comes, you get the push rod like this, so it's just a straight push rod. The clevis is already on the end and they have included a bit of silicon tube as well, which is nice. Um, so you do have to put a 90 degree bend in yourself and then just use one of these quick keeper things, um, which I think work quite well. I've used them in the past and they do seem to secure it in quite nicely there. Um, obviously the other option is I could have used my Z bend pliers and put a Z bend in, but um, I think that, I don't know, I'm quite happy with those keepers. Uh, and then I've put it on the third hole down on the horn because these horns are actually a little bit sort of long and flimsy and I think it's just too, it's too high really on that, on that top hole. So I've kind of just put it a bit more parallel to the uh, servo arm. But yeah, that seems to be working nicely. So I am going to do the exact same thing on the other side, crack on with that. Uh, and then that's really going to be the ailerons um, and the wings done. The only other little thing I've got to do as a little side job on this wing is you can see there that the, it's just got a little bit of a dint in the uh, film, which I think is uh, just from transit really. So I've just got to tighten that up with the iron. And then the horn mounting on the back there, um, as I said, I'll just put a little bit of I'll trim these down and then put a little bit of shoe goop on these just to secure these in place. But that's kind of going to be the sort of job I do right at the end, um, kind of pre-flight pre workshop job. Um, so just before we're ready to take it out to the field, I'll spend an hour in the workshop just going over bits like that, making sure everything's tight, making sure everything's secure. Um, so yeah, uh, so I'll get the other wing done and then we'll be moving on in the next clip to the... Uh, tail feathers at the back. Okay, so next job then is to get the horizontal stabilizer mounted. Um, and in order to do that, we have basically got to find the center line of this, and then obviously mark the center line of the fuselage, uh, and then draw some lines on here to where it's going to go in the fuselage and then peel the film away particularly on the bottom of course and then we use 30 minute epoxy basically to get that put in place and of course we've got to make sure that it's nice and level so anyway first job is going to be marking out the center line of this so the easiest way to do that obviously is going to be to measure this and then mark the center. So this is 57 centimeters. So center line is going to be 28.5. Let's just double check that. Yep. So 28.5 is there. Oh, 
we've also just got to come down the back of the trailing edge there and then we'll just do the same here okay so we've got the center lines marked so let's just offer this up then just to see how that's going to look Now, what I probably should do, just to be sure, is um, actually get the wings installed and then measure from the tip of that to the wingtip, tip of that to the wingtip, and make sure I've got the same distance. So um, I think I'll, uh, I'll do that. So I'll get it on my stand and then uh, show you what we're up to on there. All right then, so what I've done is got this on my stand now unfortunately in my workshop space is at a bit of a premium so when I've got the model out like this on the uh, stand with the wings on etc it's a bit difficult to sort of maneuver around it but uh, we got there so I've lined up the horizontal stab with the center lines there and you can see I've fixed it in place with some t-pins so that's that's just temporarily fixed in place uh, then what I've done is taken my nice big ruler that I've got here which is a meter long ruler and basically measured from the tip of the air on there to the tip this front tip of the horizontal stabilizer uh, and I've got 67 centimeters there or 670 mils and then I've done the same on that side and obviously got the same measurement there from the back of the tip of the air run to the front edge of the horizontal stub there, 67 as well. So I know that that's all square uh, and in the right position. And in terms of levelness, if that's the correct word, um, I've just checked the levels from the front and back. Uh, and actually as it's, as it's come out the factory, it's pretty much spot on. It does say you can obviously adjust it by sanding the seats down that this goes onto if you need to, but that is, is spot on really. Um, so that's all good. Uh, so what I've done is I've just marked at the bottom, you can't really see it, but I've marked some pencil lines on the film there. Um, so what I need to do now is take this off, take the pins out, take this off, trim the film off the bottom, also trim it off the top here. I just need to mark uh, along there and there, but obviously need to be careful not to go too close to the edge so you see the bolts. So I want to make sure I'm, I'm well within the uh, the lines here. So I'll put some marks on at the edge there and just make sure I trim well within the lines. Uh, so take that top piece of bolts are off, then put it back on again, check that I'm happy with it all, uh, and then basically uh, get the 30 minute epoxy. So mix some 30 minute epoxy up, lay it in here, um, front and back as well. So I'll trim the film off on the trailing edge there and the bit on the leading edge there. So it's secured on the seats plus front and back. Uh, and then just repin that and uh, let it go off for half an hour. So I'm gonna get that done and uh, I'll show you then what we need to do for the uh, vertical stabilizer. Okay, so back in the workshop again. Um, after the day and horizontal stabilizers all glued in place really pleased with that it's a uh, really nice secure fit it's gone on really nice and level um, so uh, couldn't really have uh, sort that on much better really uh, and it is really nice and secure it's it's quite tight uh, obviously it's glued on with epoxy to bolster uh, bolster to bolster so it should be fine but I am going to go a little bit belt and braces as, as we would say here in the UK with it. Um, obviously it's an aerobatic plane, it's going to be um, you know, flying about pretty fast, hopefully doing some uh, aerobatics with it. Um, so it's going to be pulling a few Gs and I'm sure this is going to be absolutely fine, but what I want to do is just secure that because it, at the end of the day it's just a flat surface glued onto another flat surface uh, and obviously over time it could maybe vibrate a little bit loose so I've just drilled a hole through the back here, uh, which goes right the way through this back section and into the um, horizontal stabiliser there. And then I've just got a carbon rod, which I've just cut 
uh, and I'm basically just going to epoxy that rod, just going to push that in. Um, it's a little bit fiddly to get it in, but it, it does go. There we go. So I'm going to push that in, epoxy that in, and it's just to give it that extra little bit of strength, particularly as it's been sort of pulled up like that, just to stop it from actually completely coming off. That's, that's the idea anyway. Like I say, it's probably a bit over the top, but I think I'd uh, prefer that. Um, and then next job really is, and again, I've just got to do this and then, and then leave it pretty much, is uh, 30 minute epoxy on here. And then we've got to glue the um, vertical stabilizer on. I've fastened the horn in. I did that the other day when I was doing with some leftover epoxy from doing the horizontal stabiliser, so that's nice and secure in there, absolutely solid. Uh, we've just got one last hinge here, um, so these two hinges are already glued in. That hinge there just goes into the, the back of the fuselage here, so obviously you've got to get that hinge in first and then line this up. Um, it's not a perfect fit, so it fits okay at the front, but it's at a bit of an angle at the back, but it, I can sort of just push it over actually. Um, so I'm gonna have to use some masking tape, I think, because I don't really wanna get any holes in the covering from pins uh, and just masking tape this front bit as well, which I know you can't see that well there. But let me bring it around a bit, maybe you can see. Here we go, this is what I'm talking about. So just a bit of masking tape around here, just while that dries. And then this bit here, I'm kind of going to have to just push it over. You see like that, you can see it kind of just wants to come out. Um, I guess that's just a part of the model that's not super accurate, but we should be able to sort that. Uh, and also I have noticed, uh, and again, I have had this a little while, so I can't complain too much, but the covering is pretty wrinkly, as you can see around there. And I don't know whether that's happened over time. I don't think it has because it's, or well, maybe it has, I don't know, but um, I think it's just a bit of dodgy covering, to be honest. It is obviously a tricky bit being a, a profile like that, but I'm going to have to get the iron on that, I think, and uh, just try and smooth that down if I can. So, yeah, that's my next job, really. So I'm going to mix up some more 30-minute epoxy, get it laid on there, get this in, and uh, then leave it, leave it to dry overnight, and uh, that's going to be me done again. Okay, so got the tailplane all set up and glued on. Um, really pleased with the way it's gone on. Uh, it's really nice and level. Um, vertical stabilizers, really straight. Uh, horizontal stabilizers, you've seen, is level with the wings and everything. So that's gone on really nicely. Um, all glued on with 30 minute epoxy. Um, so the next job now, um, which is gonna be the last thing I'm gonna do on this video, is just to get the uh, servos hooked up. So, let's turn this round. So I just need to get the two elevator and rudder servos hooked up there and get those connected to the surfaces at the back. So, uh, let me just show you what we need. So we've got the three push rods here in this bag. There is in fact another one, a fourth one, which is for the throttle. I'm not doing just yet so for the throttle they just supply with this thin tube and a, a bit of snake um, so we'll get that sorted later so I'll put that there for now and throw this away so we've got these three push rods with 
Clevis is already installed and as I've shown before, they've got the silicon tube on them as well, which is nice. Um, and all we've got to do is thread them. The snake's already in place at the back. So they've already got the snakes in place there. So all I need to do is just thread them. <laughs> I keep hitting it now, I've got all this on. Uh, this is why I always try and leave the surfaces off, even though the plan says to put them on near the start of the build, because you just end up, it's being awkward to manoeuvre. But uh, there's the slots for the uh, rudder, the bottom ones for the rudder, top ones for the elevator. And then on that side, there's another one for the elevator as well. So we've just got to get the snake slid into there. I need to get these uh, horns fastened up because uh, these are a little bit loose. So I just need to uh, get those tightened up. Uh, and then we use, and then we've got this here, which interestingly has got no grub screws in, so I'm gonna have to find those. But basically that um, connects the two elevator control rods uh, and joins and makes them into one basically so you have two going in and then one coming out the middle there and the middle one goes to your servo. Okay I don't see any grub screws for this which is not ideal and I also can't see the smaller push rod that I need but I've probably got something lying around I can use. Uh, let me just double check the box. No there's nothing in the box, uh, nothing in any of the bags so that is a bit of a bummer. Saying that, I think what I might be able to do, and maybe that is what you're meant to do, I imagine these are probably way too long. Um, so obviously I can just cut a piece of that off. Um, so that'll work for that. And then all I need to do is just find some grub screws, uh, which I should hopefully have lying around. Okay, let's try slide, slide in one of these. So we'll, do the, uh, we'll tackle the elevators first. So we're just going to slide this, I know it's difficult to see, into the hole. Oh yeah, so the push rod's way, way, way too long, so that's fine. So we can cut a piece off that. Uh, that's not a problem at all. So uh, I'll get the other one slid into position um, and get them cut to size. Uh, I'll dig out some grub screws and then I'll show you uh, how I get it all fastened up. Okay, that's got those all set up. I'll just show you, show you what movement we've got on the rudder. Um, so nice movement on the rudder, plenty there. So happy with that. And then, let's just set that. For the elevators, that's max movement on the elevators. I'd like, I would have liked a little bit more than that, I think, with this, you know, being an aerobatic model, um, but I think that will be fine, and there's, and there's, there's uh, plenty of down actually, there's more down than there is up I think, um, but you know that, that's still going to give me a lot of uh, movement there, so that's absolutely fine. Um, so they're all hooked up, I'll just show you what it looks like inside, um, let's bring this over here. So that's the setup we've got inside, so the rudder one's really straightforward. Um, that is just literally clevis at the other end of the push rod uh, and then uh, just a, a right angle 90 degree bend there with a servo keeper on and that's really nice there's no s movement in that at all that's really nice and solid and then the elevator one as I've shown you has just got this sort of uh, join in piece um, here um, so with, I've managed to find some grub screws by the way uh, in my stash of bits and bobs so three grub screws in there the two push rods from, from the elevators there and there, and then the central one which goes to the servo. And again, it's just got a nice degree bend and a keeper in there. Um, that's you know nice and secure. Uh, the only thing, of course, that's absolutely critical is that you make sure that you lock tight these three grub screws because definitely don't want those coming undone in flight. It's not my, uh, you know, not my super preferred method of, of uh, doing this. I personally, I always like sort of snake with snake tubes rather than the um, sort of snake outers and then these these uh, metal push rods. Um, I just sometimes think snakes are a bit more accurate, but you know, we've got to use what we've been given really, unless we want to start really sort of modifying stuff, which, which I don't. Um, but as long as we've got the Loctite on there, that should be absolutely fine. 
Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Um, so next video, we'll see me get it finished, really. I'll um, get all the little bits and bobs sorted so it's going to be locked tight in everything or, or glooping all the, um, things like the control horns and bits and bobs like that. We've got undercarriage to put on. Um, we've got the canopy to glue on and I've got the throttle servo to set up as well with, with the push rod there. So there's a few little bits and bobs to do to get it finished, but we're almost there. So I think one more episode and uh, we'll have it done. And uh, yeah, thanks ever such a lot for following along. Hope you're enjoying this build slash assembly. Um, and it, if you're into all things fixed wing RC, then uh, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up as well. I'd appreciate that. And thanks for everyone who has already subscribed. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you soon for the next one.